Here, I will explain how to varnish an icon with a brush. So, first you need varnish. I will talk in more detail in the video about the different varnishes that exist. You need a glass jar whose lid is wide enough to allow you to pick up the varnish with your brush. The brush is a flat brush with soft bristles, usually they are synthetics. You also need small glass jars, you will understand why later. You obviously need thinner, here, it's white spirit or gasoline. You also need rag paper and eventually sandpaper. It's bodybuilder's sandpaper, so it's extremely fine sandpaper that works with water. I took 800 sandpaper and also 1200, which is really one of the finest sandpapers. The paint, of course, must be very dry, it must be very clean. It takes about two to three weeks for your painting to be ready to be covered with varnish. And again, it must be placed in a room that is very dry. So, the first thing I suggest you do is take your pot of varnish and really take the time to mix it well. You see me doing it here, but I've done it way more before so you have to mix three to four minutes and then let's sit for half an hour to an hour. To be sure there are no bubbles of air that have mixed with the varnish. Then you open your jar of varnish. I put it here in a plastic container that will Allow me to be able to put it in each of the small pots, because one of the sources of grime and problems that we can have with the varnish comes simply from the fact that we opens and closes a lid on the edge of which a little varnish has dried. So, to avoid that, I suggest immediately as soon as you open the varnish pot for the first time, to put its contents in smaller packaging. You see the packaging I have here is more than enough to varnish one or two small icons, so it's much more convenient. You close them, you seal them, and you turn them over to prevent air from oxidizing your varnish. When you are ready to varnish your icon, you empty your small jar into the larger container. You have prepared. Now, there is a very important question. It is the question of the dilution of the varnish. When you buy it, it's always a little too under diluted. It is therefore necessary to incorporate about 5% of diluent, here white spirit. You see the varnish here. Which is much too thick. Warning, when you put your gasoline or white spirit, you have to take the time to mix it well, because they do not mix naturally with the varnish. And so, initially, you think you've thinned your polish, but you still need to make sure that this thinner is evenly mixed into the entire polish. At first, you will see that your varnish will be a little more liquid. But not enough yet. I will continue to mix my polish a second time. That's it, it's already a little better, and finally a third time. And you will see that then the thinner that I put will really thin the varnish. The goal being, of course, to avoid seeing the brush strokes. If you see brush strokes after applying varnish, it means that your varnish was not diluted enough. Now you see me putting the first coat of polish on the icon. Be careful, your material must be very clean, and also your icon itself. Do not hesitate to dust it, because the dirt that may appear is sometimes simply deposited on the very surface of the icon. While you see me lacquering the varnish, you see that I pull on the varnish, I will tell you about the other varnishes that exist on the market. I put here some screenshots 
that I took on the Dal Mulan catalog, which is an online seller for iconographers. You see that there are a lot of choices of different varnishes. There are varnishes that are based on white spirit, like I use, but there are also alcohol varnishes. Acrylic varnishes, that is to say with a thinner water, you have shellac. You have olifa, which is a kind of varnish from the Middle Ages which is simply oil with a bit of sicative in it, so there are a lot of possibilities. I haven't tested them all, so I can't vouch for all the techniques. The one I use, Soa. Modern polish has always given me a lot of satisfaction, and that's why. I've never really tried to have another one. I have a varnish which is easy to apply, which leaves no trace and which really effectively protects the paint. Because for me, this is the decisive criterion. Egg paint is a paint that nevertheless remains fragile. So you have to be able to protect it not only from chemical attacks, I'm thinking of all the aggressive products that are in the air, but obviously the fact of touching it, of claw, etc. This varnish has always given me satisfaction, especially with the quality of its finish. It is a semi-matte finish. Here you can see that it's very shiny, obviously since it's not dry, but you'll see at the end it gives a semi-matte varnish which, in my opinion, is a very good solution. But there are therefore many other types of varnish. The only thing I advise you is to avoid acrylic varnishes applied with a brush because you risk dissolving the egg paint itself. But we can possibly use acrylic varnishes if you use them in spray. The ultimate difficulty with these varnishes is that if you have to remove them, you will necessarily remove part of your paint, and in particular remove the gilding that was applied to the mix. Since the three hour mix that we use to lay the gilding backgrounds, you will necessarily be diluted in the same way with the same product that you will use to remove the varnish. So that's a bit of the limit if you want a varnish, it's that when you remove it, you will inevitably damage the paint underneath. So it's a bit up to you to experiment and choose what you prefer. For my part, this varnish here, which you will find in the references on the website of the Association of Linotop Colorless Version, suits me very well. We see here the first layer after 24 hours. It has dried, and you see parts that are dull and parts that are shiny. This is completely normal. What's important is that you don't see any brush strokes. That is successful. You see here a support, which is stabilized. You are sure that you will be able to put the second layer of varnish. You will see that as soon as the second coat of varnish is applied, the result will be much more homogeneous. Let it dry for 24 hours between each coat of varnish. It is very important. The varnish must be completely dry before considering covering it. Always finish your nail polish application with vertical brush strokes from top to bottom. If you look closely after 24 hours of drying the second coat of paint, you see that it is still quite irregular in its surface. This is due to the pigments which are underneath and which are not always well ground or other small dust which gets there. It is at this stage that I lightly sand the surface of the varnish. I use 1200 grit bodybuilders sandpaper for this, with which I obviously add water. Water is very important so that the sanding is fine and especially so as not to saturate your sandpaper from the start. You see, I go over the entire varnish with this very fine sandpaper. Afterwards, of course, you have to wipe off this water that remains and in which, of course, a little bit of dust has mixed and, of course, take the time to thoroughly 
Clean the icon before considering covering it with a new layer of varnish. So up close, what does it look like after sanding? You see that all the ridges of the varnish have lightly sanded, and that's what will make it possible to have a much more homogeneous result, much smoother in the end. You notice that we still see small brush strokes appearing even if they were not visible here before sanding. We see them very slightly. You will also see small parts in the paint wear. When there is a small lump, for example, in your pigment when painting, varnishing it and then sanding it will remove the paint. You can see very well here. So you're going to have to touch up a few spots that show up because they're sanded. It's very easy. You take the same pigments, the same color. You can stir in a little oxgold to make sure the paint sticks well. Never forget to obviously put your emulsion, that is to say the egg. Once you have made these small touch-ups, let it dry for a short time. You can apply the third coat of varnish, and then the fourth, still waiting 24 hours between each coat. You now see the final result after four coats of varnish. It's this finish that I like, a somewhat semi-matte, semi-gloss finish. It covers and protects the icon very well. If you want a result that is even finer, even more professional, by adjusting the satin or even shiny finish even better. You should then consider polishing, which will be the subject of a future video.